Good afternoon, Shazna. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm blessed, always good and always. Good. All the better for sitting with you. Um, I don't even know where to start with a career like yours. So let's move right to the front and then we'll go back. Okay, All right. cool. Pages. Yeah. New album. Yeah. First foray into releasing music for 20 years. Yeah. Um, there's some absence. I know. And I can imagine you've poured everything into this music, hence why it's called Pages. Yeah. Am I assuming? Tell me more. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, when writing this project, I didn't actually think too much about the fact that it had been 20 years since I'd made my own record. And um, thinking about it now, actually, like it's hard to believe that it's taken that long, but, but it has. And whilst writing this record, I definitely, it was definitely a journey, um, a good one, because I, I think I realised that by the end of it, I sort of had shed, just, just getting to the point of even making a record by myself, that I probably shedded a lot of, um, things where I didn't actually, I'd shed it a lot. So I think it took a lot for me to write my own record and and doing it, it was quite cathartic. Shedded like a snake? Uh, I think shedded. <laughs> shedded when like. When I say shedded, probably mm. just, I never, I think writing within a group felt like, um, it was a comfort blanket. Um, Safe space. Yeah, it was definitely a safe space, and and I'd gotten so used to that safe space that I never sort of saw myself outside of it. Mm. And obviously, over twenty years, there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of you know you you start to just change as a person. And it was I me mean, writing this record. I actually realised that stepping outside of that safety net was quite important for the person that I am today mm. um, and it, it allowed me to experience different things creatively and and to not see things how I had seen them for 20 years just thinking that I, I could only be in that environment so yes yeah, it, it was really good it was, what was the most indelible part of that journey in terms of what impacted you most because I can imagine becoming a mother would be one of those things. Yeah. Um, two of those things. Yeah. What else? Um, I don't know, I'd probably say just that really. I think motherhood definitely... Whole different dynamic. It's right? a whole different dynamic and it's a whole different... It's no longer just about you. So you, every, everything you do from that point on, I feel has more purpose, and um, they are pretty much at the forefront of all my decisions and my thought processes. So even doing this record by myself, it was, it's like legacy, do you know what I mean? It's just how, you know, I'm, when you write, when you work by yourself, you are only responsible for you. And I feel that it's really important that everything I do, for, since having children, everything that I do is done in the right way and done in a way that with them at the forefront of my mind and how I want to be seen, come across, portray myself, leave behind. Um, show them so yeah there's all these other things that you know play a part when you have children where are they featured on the new work on the new work mm. so my i mean my first official single kiss of life was written about them and they're in the video for that song how was that as an experience uh it was do you know what? It was actually great to see because so my son is 18 and my daughter's 14. So we're, we're at a actually he's coming out of it now, but you know, he's at an age where 
his life revolves around his friends. So mm. when they, you know, when they were small, there's only like what three and a half or something like that years between them. When they were small. They did everything together, played together, everything. And so my son now sort of going off into the world where he's got his own social life and you know things like that. He doesn't really um, invest as much time into his little sister as much as I would like him to. So watching, so them being at the shoot together was great because they had nobody else. You know, his mates weren't there and they were coming into an environment what, which they, doing that video, you know, they weren't used to. So they only had each other and they, I watched them have a great time together that day. So for me, that was probably one of the biggest wins that I took away with me that day. And also, it was, uh, you know, take it, not take your kids to work day, but the fact that they were doing that video with me made no difference to them at all. They still chose to take that opportunity to sort of together take the mic out of me. There was one scene where they could see me on the monitor and my son, and obviously with a huge light coming down and my son uh, told me that he could see my mustache. And so that was it. The two of them throughout the whole take were, I could hear them behind me, sort of giggling to each other about that. And, you know, just, just another day of, yeah. Taking the piss out of mom. Taking the piss out of mom. <laughs> it's part of the course. Part of the course, yeah, even you know, though I was there, you know, all glammed up and yeah. the day was about me, it clearly wasn't. <laughs> no, I can, I know, I know what it's like to involve your children in what you do. That's yeah. uh, it's probably the height of all blessings. Yeah. Missa. Yeah. Missa. Catalyst, really, for you coming back. Yeah. As a solo. Yeah. Speak about it. So Missiles, I wrote that with Ant Whiting and Emily Phillips, and we spent quite a lot of time on that song. When we started writing it, we didn't actually, I feel like, although there were connotations of it being a love song, it still didn't, there were parts of it where it still did not feel like a, a typical love song. So when we spent some time going back and forth, like it didn't matter where I was, she would send me messages about the song and I would send ideas back and when we finally got to the end of it and I listened to it what I took from that song is I felt that it it felt as though it was about myself in the sense of the the whole sort of process of what I was going through which was really about stripping everything away stripping the last all the fanciful things of the last 25, 30 years, um, stripping all that away and just literally, even, you know, working by myself, going back to the basics of what I love, which is songwriting and getting rid of all the nonsense and just going back to that in its simplest form. Stripping it all back. Yeah. Mm. I wondered when I was you know, going through it all, how your role as chair of the Ivor Awards Committee mm. contributed, influenced your approach to songwriting and shaping the lyrical content, mm. if indeed it did. Yeah, I would say it definitely did. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes when you're on those committees um, and you are looking at songs lyrically and melodically, you know, listening to a song is one thing, but when you're actually reading the content mm. and, and what it's about, it's, you know, I kind of, it, it definitely opened up my eyes to really paying attention to what I do and how I do it. Um, I found that it also played a role. I mean, they used to do, they, they do this section which is called the Rising Star award where it's for young, um, not young, but uh, musicians and composers to, mm. who are, you know, wanting to break into the industry to send, you know, they send their, their pieces through, I think it's like three tracks each and, um, and listening to a lot of them and then stripping it down and getting down to obviously a winner. And I've, I've done that, I think three years in a row. And what I loved about doing that was, 
you know, you kind of listen to hundreds of songs and where a lot of them would be, you know, you could hear a lot of sort of conformed pieces where it was just, you'd hear music that you'd, you could hear on the radio. So everybody's latched on, you know, people where you've either latched on to what's big and what's out at the time. But what I loved about that was that even though that could be quite tedious, when you heard a song that wasn't like that, that wasn't conforming and was unique and just its own thing, that it brought me back to, it's like, like I said to before, like things in its simplest form, brought me back to just how, you know, the music, music industry is so saturated with what's the hottest thing mm. that sometimes we forget that the hottest thing is not the hottest thing because everybody's doing it. So it's quite, I found doing that sort of panel quite um, beautiful hearing those sort of diamond in the rough people that would come through, cut through that weren't, were not were just so different. The last one, uh, not last one, it was a couple of years ago where Naomi Kimpanu won it and and I was so pleased for her because she's so special. And, um, and she probably in her own little way inspired me to go back to the beginning. Mm. Um, because I think if you are your own, if you have your own sense of identity, as much as we don't realize it can be sort of not bashed out of us, but <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just important to retain. To retain. Mm. I, I totally agree. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah. 2022, you started writing this, right? Or decided yeah, to get back in your... Yeah, get so back this, in the zone. You're happily married. Yeah. A couple of kids. Yeah. But there's uh, distinct themes of loneliness and heartbreak on this piece of work, right? Yeah. So was that just an, uh, an attempt to deliver a 360 snapshot of where you are, where you've been? Yeah. Or was it just where you went? No, where I, where I am, where I... No, where I've been... Um, at the end of the day, I, I, they are ex things that I have experienced. So, mm. I think if it, it, I think with, with music, it's about it's personally speaking as, as a creator, it's just literally, you know, about it's not about me writing an album where it's just about me and my experiences. It's about experiences and. Because that's with music, that's what connects us all, right? We all pretty much experience the same things at one time or another. They're not um, heartbreak and all that, or joy or love are not exclusive to just one person or another. We all have these experiences at different times. And so I kind of, I, I'm happy to revisit some of those places because I know that somebody needs to hear it. Mm -hmm. Or wants to hear it. On the subject of revisiting, mm -hmm. let's go back, back into time. You were what twenty years old when it all kicked off. That, what? Around that age? Yeah, around yeah? That I'm age. trying not to give yeah, away yeah, your age. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> so, um, you know, when you contrast what you see today compared to what you guys did, because you did it worldwide. Like, it wasn't small, small. Um, when you see you know, the difference or when you observe the industry right now, what do you see as the big difference? Is there a big difference? Is it just much of a muchness? So, same on, same. I say so, well, so much change in terms of the kind of music, obviously, that's being put out now and, and obviously how people do that. Right. There's no, you know, that that one route of going to a major label doesn't exist anymore, which is great because it allows more people to come through mm. and stops people defining what people want to hear. Mm. Um, was that an issue? Was that an issue? Mm. I'd say, yeah, definitely. That was an issue. So but that whole retaining individuality that we were just speaking on and letting that colour, the creativity that... Your output. Yeah, definitely. I think we struggled with that in the beginning. Right. I think if I think about all things from the very beginning, I mean, when Melanie and I were, 
like our very first deal was like 18, we were 18 years of age mm. to ZTT and the kind of music we wanted to put out, that wasn't really a thing then, um, especially being a, a diverse group, it, it just wasn't really a thing. But so now I see the kind of music that people, people are just, you know, you've got people like Arlo Parks, like people are able now to put out whatever style of music they want to, mm. whatever their background, and I, I think that's great. Um, but there are, yeah, there are so many changes, so many differences. A lot of them I would say for the better, um, for sure. So would you have rather your, rather your come up now or then? No, actually mm. then though. <laughs> <laughs> well, given everything you just said, you'd still rather, now why, why? Uh, why then? Because obviously there's a lot more there are a lot more artists now, so I think the cut to cut through is probably quite difficult now. You don't think it all sense would cut through now? Uh, well, in our authentic selves, no. as our authentic selves, yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. But I think, but the industry is different now. The I'm, I'm thinking now just on terms that are probably a bit more aren't even to to do with creativity. Making a light, like making a living now, I think is probably harder. For musicians, mm -hmm. so in that sense, I'm glad we did it then. Right. What would you change about your come up? Um, what would I change? If anything. If anything. Hmm. What would I change? What would I change? Do you know what? It's. it's I was thinking about this the other day. Mm. The thing is this, is when you are... Yeah, because the changes that I'm going to say, they're not even necessarily changes within myself. myself. Mm. And I don't mean that in, in a way as if like, there was nothing to change about me. I don't mean that at all. But when you're in a group, you cannot speak for anybody else. You can only be responsible for you. Yeah. But still, if you're in a group, doesn't matter how much you're responsible for yourself, you cannot control everything else. So, so what would I, what would I change? Maybe, I, I don't, I, I don't know, because it's really difficult. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Bear in mind what you just said, it's, yeah. Yeah, because I'm, on my own, mm. I'm responsible for mm. myself, so how I put myself out there mm. is how I put myself out there. Mm. And, but if you're, for, for anybody that's, it could be a rock band, anybody where there's, you talk, there are more entities mm. in that setup. You can't, um, doesn't matter what you would change because, you know. How many songs have you written in your life? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Really? Yeah, I don't know. How many, if you were to put a percentage on what hasn't been heard from you? Lows, but for the right reasons, I say okay. I'm not good enough. <laughs> I'm quite by your own standards, honest, or by my, yeah. quite, my own, okay. I think I'm like yeah, I'm musically in tuned enough yeah. to know what's good, what's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Your um, journey, you, you know, there's obviously a stark contrast between the Appletons and they went stage school. You didn't, mm. and it's you've been out there in so far as saying that it was difficult for you to adjust to the limelight. You clearly did. So if you had advice for you know, somebody who came from a similar background as yourself. Is that, is that the end of my time? No, that's that... <laughs> 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 I'm going to say, I, I, I've, asked, I've asked, so I'll finish. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, if you, were, if you were to impart that advice, what, what would it look like? What kind of advice to... To, to a young, up and coming... Someone, yeah, someone, someone, someone who didn't go to... Yeah, who's you know, like I mean, yourself, who's, yeah. you know, entry into the industry it's, was similar, similar yeah. to yours. Talent is brighter. You know, know what you're doing, know where you're going, but just yeah. weren't used to what came in. Yeah. What would I say? I mean, just keep keep doing it. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's such a funny dynamic, isn't it? I was in a band with three people that went to stage school, so had all of, you know, the, the tools of, of, of what it took to be in this industry. Mm. But then we got signed off of songs that I had written. So the, the coming together are two... Do you understand? We came 
coming together yeah. from two different... Of course. Polar. Po yeah. yeah. Um, you know, anybody sort of coming up from my background as, a, as an aspiring musician, I don't, I think as long as there's a hundred percent self belief in what they're doing, I don't think anything can stop them. Anything can stop them at all. Yeah. Where are you going with pages? This foray into music again, like you know what comes if it does what yeah, we expect just, it to just, do. So. Just being back into. Mm -hmm. the space of enjoying songwriting and it finally sort of being coming with no nonsense other than writing good songs. It's the only way I can describe it because it's the first time writing this album that I've been sort of able to go into a studio and it just be about the song. So as long as I can keep going into spaces where it's just about the song, first and foremost, um, I'm quite happy to move forward. People are going to probably move forward with you, but you've reimagined a couple of tracks, mm. um, which is going to provide that nostalgia. Yeah. But also critique. Yeah. You're, you're ready for that? The critique, yeah. I mean, I've not done those songs, I've not reimagined those songs to be better than the original. Oh. And, the, the, you know, people have gone on a journey with those songs mm. for over 20 years um, my reasons for doing them was because I always felt that you know I wrote those songs 20 years ago and listening to and, and those songs resonate with so many people and I still love performing those songs but I felt that as somebody that's older and maturer there were certain things that I wanted to sort of explore hearing on those songs so yeah strings mm. and hearing them in because obviously never ever and pure shores they're, they're in their original formats have such a pop sensibility about them whereas as an older person now i'm quite happy to sit and listen to some jazz or some and i just wanted to sit and listen to those two songs in particular mm. in that sort of zone understood do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah. and see how they see how they felt in that zone and so yeah it's to pay homage it's definitely not to make any better or or worse than it's it's just um how can i put it it's just listening to them in a way where i'm at a different stage of life and you know i mean i did pure shores on piano rooms with the orchestra right. and it was just that, well, they, they did it based off the, mm. the, the uh, reimagined version. It's just gorgeous. You looking forward to performing? Yeah. Yeah, I am. How do you envisage the shows? I haven't thought about that yet. For real? <laughs> no, but I'm going to start. But, because um, I didn't think this far yeah. along, you know, I just... Done. Just, did, you know... Just, just do it. And just doing. Yeah. Studio, making a record and just having the best time creating with these people. I didn't think what was going to come after which is good actually because then I was just in the moment yeah um, so every time I get to a, a, a point whether it's sat here with you or doing whatever I'm like oh my god okay <laughs> we're doing this right so and it's a nice it's it's nice because there are for me there are no expectations I've, apart from my only expectation was to create a project to create a record that I was really happy with and that I enjoyed doing and love and and can play it, listening to it and thinking, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with that piece of work. So that's, I wouldn't want to sit here with a dud record talking to people. So I'm really happy with, with what I've done. More power to you. Thanks Thank for your time, you. really appreciate it. Thank you.